If you've clicked on this video, you're probably somebody who has been consuming content online for a long time, probably most likely on YouTube. And you've always had this kind of niggling feeling about, oh, I want to share more. I want to put more out. Like, I could do that. Like that video is rubbish and I could do a way better job. That sometimes happens with me. Um, but in general, like you can consume so much content, but then that desire might just build up for you actually wanting to put yourself out on camera. Or maybe it's a blog article or a writer or someone on Twitter that you follow and you're like, I could write articles like that. I could post like that. Or on Instagram, I could post cool photography shots like that. Like, why why, do I, why don't I do that? I could do a better job than that guy. And yet this is quite a common thing that a lot of people step into or like comes into their mind when they wanna start putting out content online, but then they either never do because they're too worried about what people are gonna think they don't think they're good enough. Uh, the fear of actually being successful in putting stuff and building an audience and then getting all the haters and, and people criticizing you. Like there's a multitude of reasons why uh, a lot of us have this idea to want to post online in some capacity and then we never end up doing it. But in this video, I just wanted to talk candidly unscripted about how I managed to get through probably quite similar worries that you probably have also had and and how I continue to put out videos regularly, post on my different platforms, share my insights, my knowledge, um, just whatever is going on in my life and try to give value as much as I can to, to people who would like to consume it. Because for me, it was also super difficult at the start. Like I'd been consuming YouTube videos since basically the start of the website uh, from as early as I can remember being in secondary school, consuming all the early YouTubers. But then the idea of actually putting stuff out online myself crossed my mind and I kind of dabbled with it a little bit. Like I, I have two defunct YouTube channels that you can search for now. Enjoy, um, but I never put myself out in front of the camera because I was just too nervous and scared and thought like, I'm not funny enough. I don't like the way I, I look. I don't like all these things about me. So what can I possibly give people? What value can I possibly provide to people um, that anyone would care? But what I've realized is that even though now there's a massive plethora of content out there, there's still a space for people like you watching this video um, to share what you know about life and to share your perspectives and to document it. There's so many interesting lifestyles that people have. And if you think your life is not very interesting at all, there's still perspectives that you uniquely have because you've lived the life that you've had and had a lot of experience in whatever thing that you've consumed or done or where you live or where, how you were brought up. There's so many things that differentiate you as you. And ultimately all of those life experiences are gonna make you speak in front of the camera and communicate with your audience in a different way. Like if you've been a viewer of this channel for a long time, you you know I'm quite silly and jokey and I try and share that with stupid animations that I do. But that's just my personality that I've had for a long time. I know that when I was younger, I could make people laugh and I tried to overcompensate for my shyness because I knew I could crack a joke here or there. And that ultimately meant that people liked me, which I always knew was like an easy way to get people to like me. Um, but, but yeah, that's just a part of my personality, which means that for my niche, for example, which is creativity, filmmaking, productivity, all these topics, I can talk about that in a way that is different to people like, you know, your, your Ali Abdals and your other Peter McKinnons who, you know, I think Peter McKinnon can be pretty funny, but I'm gonna just naturally be different in front of the camera because I have different life experiences to him and I have a different personality. If one of your concerns might be, oh, there's already too much content about this niche that I have or this interest that I have, there's always gonna be people who would rather watch you talking about it than a Peter McKinnon or an Ali Abdel because as much as I like both of those YouTubers, in, the, in we're talking about YouTubers right now, uh, there's probably people who don't like them at all and they would rather watch me talk about something uh, like, I don't know. What do they talk about? Productivity stuff. They might, there'd be, there'd be, there's someone out there who's like, I prefer the way that Adam comes across as a person versus these other two YouTubers, which is crazy for me because I just think they're way better than me at talking in front of the camera and like presenting and obviously, well, I mean, they should be because they've had more experience and they've been doing it for way longer than I have. But yeah, for some people, they just like your vibe and they like you because you're either like really raw or casual and you just, 
have a personality type that tends that connects with that person for some reason so i think that's a really big important element is that you're not unique because of what you've done in life and yeah that might make you unique but that you don't need that to be a metric or like a, a starting point to put content out there you just need to be you and honestly the, the main skill that you actually need to develop is just being able to speak confidently in front of the camera in a way that best expresses your personality to your audience. And I'm still trying to figure this out. You know, I've been making YouTube videos technically for three years, but also realistically, I've, I was putting out stuff back in 2015, 2016. Uh, it's all privatized now because I just find it so cringe, but those early videos just helped me develop my ability to speak in front of the camera to get better, to be able to watch it back and be like, mm, I think I can improve. I, I, I just sound a bit odd and not like me and things like that. Because talking in front of the camera is ultimately a skill. You need to be able to get better at this. You need to just put the reps in and then eventually you will be able to actually come across as, as close to the version of you that exists in the real world. If that's, you know, that's the persona or relationship that you want with your audience. An amazing quote that really helped me get over my personal worry about putting stuff out online because everybody this, everybody has said everything that I've probably said out of my mouth in all of the 70 plus YouTube videos that I've already put out. Um, and it's an amazing quote, which is everything that needs to be said has already been said. But since no one was listening, everything must be said again. I read this quote, I don't even know when, it was a while ago, but it was a quote that really deeply affects me because it really put into perspective that everything has been said, like there's books and uh, like everything that we need to hear as human beings to be rich, to uh, feel more confident, to do all this. Like it, the information has already existed out there for ages in different sources. And there's nothing that you're going to say that is original or is like unique that separates you, which is why the only unique thing that you can actually honestly and realistically rely on is you as you and so many times i'm just honestly shocked by how the things that i'm saying in my videos um people respond by not knowing about that or being like oh i never thought about this that way or i didn't know that uh your davinci editing software had this cool feature and for me those things are just so normal and like so embedded into my knowledge that i don't even question them as being difficult or not very well-known things so when i share them and people are like oh wow that's so interesting that's so cool i'm like oh crap what the, you've just reminded me that what i know is should not be taken for granted and hence why i actually need to share it or test out like how many people actually know about this thing so then when i share it i'll actually get genuine feedback about how obvious or like how easy this is to other people to know or how com how how much common knowledge this specific thing is because i think we just you know like everybody has their own interest right maybe you you're really into video games or whatever and you just like you're on the bus and you just read articles about some playstation 6 leak or whatever and then if you made a video like oh i'm talking about the playstation 6 leak rumors it might have this chip it might have that whatever most people who are into video games are not looking at stuff like that about like rumor leaks about the chipset and you might happen to know what the chipset means and what the 21 floppy gigabyte whatever is mean and what that could mean for gaming like to you that is so normal because you just digest that stuff because you find it so interesting most people don't and you can break it down for them in a way that actually is digestible so they can understand what it means and what it means for their interest which is gaming and what the playstation 6 might be for example and yeah, I have to constantly remind myself this. And I think you could probably test this out with friends and, and close friends. Like maybe you have an interest that they might be a little bit related to, or you can be like, oh, do you know uh, this, this, this? I had this recently with my little brother who who started uh, doing his YouTube channel again. And he's like, what is ISO? What is shutter speed? Like all these things that I've literally known about since I was 16, maybe like probably 15 when I started learning how to use cameras and getting interested in filmmaking. He's like, what does this mean? What white balance should I set it at? And it's just so second nature to me but to him it's like this thing that he never does and needs to be taught about what to do and i'm like oh that just completely flips my whole mindset around what kind of content i can actually share online because truthfully there's lots of people who don't know anything about this subject area or they know a little bit about it or they want to get interested in it like video editing for example but they know nowhere near as much as i do 
about the difference between Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut. Hence why this video has as many views as it does because I'm a big nerd and I actually research these things and have used all of these softwares deeply and I actually want to know what the difference is because I'm a big I'm a big filmmaking geek. So yeah, like no matter what your actual niche or specialism or interest is, there's always going to be people who are also curious and interested about those things. But you either have lightly consumed stuff that they have not delved into within that area of interest, or maybe you've gone so deep in a it, within this area of interest that you can just talk to all the beginners who are just getting curious and just getting interested in this thing. Bouldering, perfect example. I started bouldering uh, eight months ago. Never done it before. Instantly, YouTube, bouldering. Loads of boulder, bouldering people who've been bouldering for years and years talk about, hey, here is the steps. Here's how you get better at bouldering. All these things that to them are just so second nature and simple to me is like, whoa, that's amazing. I didn't know you had to like put your toe on the bouldering thing so then you can pivot better. Like all these little things to them is, is just so easy. And that's why you should be less critical about your knowledge because there's so many people who don't know that and you do. I know some people have this idea about like, oh, it's vain to post online. It's vain to like share my not share what what is what is going on in my life or to like or it's vain to try and teach people like, like who am I to teach people about this thing? But I'm always surprised by how um, a lot of things that I've posted online, um, people tend to actually really resonate with them or agree with them or they're like, oh, that's somebody else who has these thoughts and feelings about this topic that I also share. And I, I feel less alone because of that, because I've watched somebody that I know or have gotten to know via the internet. And they appear to be human. They also have like struggles and doubts about things, or they've also figured something out that I don't know about. And I think that's one of the great things about just YouTube, the internet, sharing stuff online is that you can connect with so many cool people who relate to you. Because if you grew up in a small town or, a, or even a big city, but you just never found like your people, the people who were as nerdy as you or as interested in that specific thing as you, then like life and just your day-to-day -day can, feel, can feel quite lonely. And for me at least, like YouTube and the internet when I was younger made me feel way less lonely because I would watch nerdy people who were as interested as me with like filmmaking stuff. And it's like, well, okay, so there are people who are just like me who have the same interests as me just because that they had the courage to share their stuff and put, the, put, put whatever they were making out into the world and sharing their thoughts online out into the world. You just feel way less lonely. It feels way more achievable for you to do the same thing especially if the creator is particularly like human and and doesn't just like play this persona and they actually can speak candidly in front of the camera which is what i'm trying to do in general with this with this channel at least not with every video you know i have my videos where i'm specifically wanting to teach you something but i want to make videos like this where i can actually try and talk candidly and openly about things that I've learned in a way that hopefully speaks to you in a, from a more human level rather than a crazy editing uh, level, even though I like my crazy editing. Ballet, add one now. Yeah, my editor Ballet. He's great at adding the crazy animations. <laughs> Getting haters, having people who, who don't like what you have to post and are gonna say bad negative things about what you put out. That This is also a very common worry about like marketing yourself and putting yourself out online on, on social media. I am constantly surprised by how rare this happens or has happened to me at least. Maybe if once my channel grows, I'll get way more hate. Maybe on this video, you're gonna be hated on me. Ugh. Most of the comments that I get are really positive. And when I get hate comments, if they're not constructive criticism, they're basically like douchebags who are just writing stuff for the sake of writing it. And at that point, I honestly just delete a lot of those comments because I don't care about what those people have to say because they're not fans. Their, con their criticism is not constructive. We're actually trying to help me. It's just trying to put me down. And I genuinely don't feel like, maybe it's just my personality, but th those kind of comments don't actually affect me because if that user genuinely, genuinely actually cared about you to some degree or cared about you getting better, the criticism would be more analytical and bigger than just like, you suck. Like, I don't know this person. If they say they suck, then why would that affect me? I don't know. Maybe it's just my mindset, but I know for a lot of people, it definitely um, would affect them. Like this kind of hate as it were. But generally, like if you're if you're a new creator or you want to you're new to posting stuff online, I really don't think you're going to get a lot of hate because the first people that are going to see your stuff is your friends. I guess if you're younger, you might get teased by like, who is this person trying to think he's a YouTuber? Or, or, or this person thinks he's a he's a he's a writer. Huh? Like, 
I think most people don't do that. And I guess in school, if I started YouTube, I definitely would have got hate like that. I think if you just have like one person who says, oh, I really liked it, which you definitely likely to get at least one person who compliments you on what you're doing, just stick with it because you're going to be crap at first. People are going to criticize you, especially if you're in school or something watching this or in a workplace or you have a friend group that it's particularly like, Ooh, it's a very English thing <laughs> to have people like that. You've just got to have that self-belief that like what I'm doing is good. If I, if you get one nice comment about what you're doing and someone says like, oh, I really appreciate that you released that. That's really cool. I wish I could do that. That should be enough. At least it was for me. That was enough for me to just keep going. I just, as soon as I got like one, my first person saying like, oh, you're actually really, you, you seem good speaking in front of the camera. I watched that video, it was really good. Like all these affirmations of people who either know me or don't know me saying that I made a good thing was always enough for me to be like, I can't be that crap if one person is willing to say that I did good. <laughs> like, like surely I can't be that terrible. If I was really terrible, no one would have said that. Uh, yeah, you could say if your parents say it, they're just saying it because they're your parents and they like everything you do. So maybe try and like get a friend who's not your parent, <laughs> who, who is actually honest with you. Um, but yeah, I'm just constantly surprised by how little hate actually does exist online. Um, at least for me now with like under 10K subscribers. I just haven't had a lot. Um, and the hate that I have got is like really weird and uncalibrated and it doesn't affect me at all. Maybe I just have a thick skin. I'm not sure. It's probably a good thing in a lot of ways. If that is your worry, honestly, it's not a big deal. You're going to get people who might say mean stuff to you, but ignore it. It's not constructive criticism if they just say, oh, you're rubbish. Huh? Like, so what? And you're instantly going to get people who are actually like, whoa, this person made a YouTube video on photography at the camera. That's so cool. I wish I could do that. I've got messages from people uh, who I haven't spoken to in a long time, DMing me things saying like, oh, I've been silently watching your YouTube videos. They're really good. Keep it up. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is a person I haven't spoken to in so long. And me putting out content on YouTube consistently, reminding them that I exist by doing that. They've been just silently consuming that. And they are like, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Like, holy crap. There's... That's like the best feeling ever to have that. Like, I don't think I need um, 100,000 subscribers. I mean, be nice, but like that, like just having one or two people out of the blue send messages like that. How could I stop? Like, how could I not keep doing this with praise like that from people who I used to be close with and then we just naturally drifted apart? People I don't even know who are like writing really well thought out compliments about my videos. Like when that's happening, like as soon as that happens, there's so much momentum behind you, especially in the early phases when you're not like making the momentum and the motivation isn't built up by money. Like you have to find another reason for it. And maybe it could come purely from like your own internal desire to just do the thing, which is amazing. Like if you just have that in you, like use it. But yeah, for me, like, having a few people message me saying that I'm making good stuff. That feeling is like, oh, I want to bottle it up and sell it for $9.99. I'm not making a living yet from YouTube. Like I'm just not, I'm spending more money to make content and time especially than I am bringing back. But the, the skills, again, the people who've reached out to me, all these things, the things that I've picked up, it's been way worth the three years that I've already put into it. Just feeling a sense of this channel actually growing to something, feeling a sense of people who actually like appreciate what I'm doing, friends or like old acquaintances reaching back to me. It's, I don't regret it at all. And anything, it's really just training my ability to be patient, to be consistent, to just put stuff out there, regardless of like the slow growth and, and just knowing that having belief in myself that everything is going to work out and it's all going to make sense in the end. That is, a, I think, a skill that if, if you continue to do it as well as, as to put stuff out there consistently, just have that self-belief. Eventually you'll get the belief from other people and then it just makes everything so much easier. But that is a, is a skill set that can just be applied to so many other areas of your life. And I think it just makes you more aware of your ups and downs, like your mental ups and downs. Like this video, honestly, I'm filming it at what? It's, it's, 10 past 10 now here. I'm tired, honestly. I didn't really want to film this because I was like, oh, I'm tired, I can film it tomorrow, but but I just know I can speak candidly. I've done this before. I want to film something so I can give it to my, my editor so he can get a head start on getting this video out. Yeah, just being able to build up that skill of just having faith that you've actually done this enough times, holding this microphone that you can actually say things that would be valuable to people without questioning too much like oh it needs to be perfect i need to be like 
I like have my morning routine down, then I'm gonna set up my gear and it's put my best soundtrack on the background, get my gear ready and just make sure the light's perfect, then I can shoot it. Like I'm sure there's YouTubers who do that and it's amazing, but I think in general, no one cares about that. <laughs> and they're not gonna notice it. Only me myself in my with my critical filmmaking eye would even notice things like that. In my whole last video, I had my headroom was like so high and I was like, oh probably in this video I've been crouching down like that. But my headroom was like really much higher than it than it has been in other videos and i was like oh should i reshoot it my headroom look at it so much higher oh i'm gonna reshoot it and then i was like come on adam no like no one's gonna care about this only you as your perfectionist video filmmaker i would notice something like this i'm gonna share with you uh one of my other favorite quotes from the book show your work which is it sounds a little extreme but in this day and age if your work isn't online, it doesn't exist. We all have the opportunity to use our voices, to have our say, but so many of us are wasting it. If you want people to know about what you do and the things you care about, you have to share. And that's ultimately it, right? If you want to be able to connect with people, if you want to build an online community, if you want to build up the skill of talking to camera, if you even want to have the chance of potentially like having yourself grow in whatever form of creation, content creation that you want to do, you have to put yourself out there and especially now in this day and age everybody's sharing the people who are putting stuff out online whether that be online courses or you know whatever or music if you're a producer those are the people that are going to get ahead and as much as i would love to have stayed behind the camera all my life because <laughs> i loved that i loved staying behind the camera looking at the screen filming things ultimately there's a limit to that and that limit opens up when i can speak with you human to human, man to man, person to person, and just share candidly and sometimes not so candidly my, my knowledge, my expertise, my skills, my thoughts, my views, and be open to everything that comes from that, the good and the bad. And honestly, once you start to embrace that, take the first steps, cringe at your old stuff, delete your old stuff if you make it and you don't like it, but don't be a perfectionist because there's no such thing as that in art or in creativity. It doesn't exist. You can always get better, yes, but you have to just mess up and make crap stuff before the the clean, it's like sewage water. It's like a, it's like a pipe. There's loads of crap and, and stuff in the pipe. And then in order to like unclog it, you have to keep pushing it and all the crap's going to start to come out <laughs> first. Sorry about this analogy. And then the clean water will start to flood through. And then like, you're like, oh, look, all my other stuff was terrible, but all this new stuff It's like, I'm starting to, you, you'll also start to get a sense that like, you'll you'll gradually see improvements like it might not be on your first second or third video it could be on your 20th video then on your 20th video or your 20th blog post or your 20th creation online that you put out listen back to the first thing that you put out and you'll be like what the hell i've grown so much i think it's like um it's like when you have if you have like a little brother or something and and you don't really see them growing up. And then if you look at an old picture, an old video, you're like, whoa, that looks like a baby only two years ago. And now they're so grown up. Ah. It's the same thing with creative work. You can't put into perspective uh, how far you've come unless you actually look back at how far you came from. And I think that's it for this video. I hope it helped in some way to kind of, you know, give you that boost of motivation that you might need to actually like market yourself online, uh, put yourself out there online just to make the first steps to sharing stuff because it's gonna be really scary at first but you're not gonna regret it come on like even if you stop after a year because you realize you don't like it you you tried it it didn't work for you for whatever reason and then you quit and you do something else and then it's never this like thing in your head of like oh i wanted to i wanted to put like uh be a writer and share like my cool uh writing stuff uh, on my blog and oh, i could have done that maybe if i did it for a year something would have happened like that regret is just gonna suck it's way better to just try it for a year at least um, with, with my YouTube channel, I kind of said that as well. I was like, one year, I'm just going to do it, try and be as consistent as I can and then see what happens. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. Totally not out of the 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 phase of like, oh, I'm definitely like, I still I still have times where I'm like, oh, is this is this really worth it? Should I keep doing this? Uh, but I, I can't see myself quitting. Like, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to the camera like this. I enjoy putting stuff out. And again, I just always get a message or two from someone saying it was good. So if they say it's good, then I have to believe them or else I'll just be maybe lying to myself. <laughs> Too many people, if enough people say that what you're doing is good, you have to believe it or else you're just lying to yourself and you're like lying to the reality of what the video is. 
um, there's only so long that you can keep up that facade of being like, no, it's rubbish. And everyone's like, it's really good. You're like, no, it's rubbish. It's good. And you'll make good stuff with time, with focus, with, uh, yeah, just pushing through your personal barriers. And if you want a bit more help with that, uh, I'd recommend checking out, I'm just going to move my chair. I usually do this with a jump cut, but I'm going to do it like this. You check out this video, uh, where I talk about some more stuff related to this about um, a really important mindset that I had for a long, long time that messed up my ability to even make content. And until I fixed that, then I was actually able to start putting out content as regularly as I do. So check out that video. Thanks so much for watching to the end and I'll see you in the next video.